So if you head over to the App Store today, you'll see that Nomad Sculpt here has got a new update. So it would be well worth going over and checking it. And I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what is in the new version. So 1.85 came out an hour ago for me. I've been on the beta, so I've been using it extensively. If you look in at the button that says version history, you can see 1.85 and it's telling you what we've got in there. So if you go into it, you can see there's a load of things. Now, there's a couple of huge things and the rest to me seem to be like tweaks and a couple of really cool tweaks. So the two big things are quad remesher plugin from Exercise. Uh, that's a purchase, so it's a $15 one-time purchase, which which is very, very, very acceptable for, 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 for me. It's on par with the quality of um, Z Remesher. It was made by Exercide, who's the same guy that did Z Remesher and also a Quad Remesher in Blender. So a $15 fee is, is very acceptable in my world. Um, and also we've got face groups. So face groups are... Um, usable with um, quad remesher now now there's lots of other stuff lots of tweaks there's some icon tweaks um, that I quite like which I'll go through in this little video it will only be short and brief but then you're going to see a lot of this over the next few weeks so let's dive right in open up nomad and see what we we like so the first thing that you might notice is, or, or certainly on, on my version now, is that we've got these coloured icons. I can't remember if they'd changed before, but I'm absolutely loving that. It's just making it so much easier to navigate sets in here. Um, I, I, I haven't noticed if that had changed before because I use the beta so much. But um, what you will notice is two buttons that really matter. I've dragged them to the top just so that you can see them up here. So first of all, face groups. And these are, if you're familiar with um, most other 3D programs, the, these are vertex sets. or the, the, the points that make up the model are grouped into sets. In ZBrush, it's called polygroups. Um, and, and in here, it's, it's obviously called face groups. Now, if you t t tap on face group and just go to something like rectangle, you can do polygon, lasso, as normal. You can do all the ones that you would expect. And if you just draw across, I've got some symmetry on you get a color selection so it's not like masking so obviously you can you can mask like that still like like we've done in the past but this makes these intersects for you now at the top you've got this little bar here that gives you some of the settings and you've got a little button on the side called hide here um, and basically what it means is we've got the ability to show and hide in 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 groups which is super, super useful. You, you won't see it that much in this video, um, but basically it, it's going to be really, really useful for us to, to make models and split them into two groups. So if you, uh, you can clear it and get rid of it, you can tap one and hide, you can tap again, another one hide, again, clear it, you can invert them, yeah, do do click click one in the middle and hide it and then invert it. And as you can see there now, it's just a great way to collect up your model. So if you've got an entire character, you can split it down into face groups now. So very simple and very, very powerful. And I'll, I'll over the next few weeks, I'll really cover where we use that. That's the first one. Now, the one that is really, really powerful and the one that, the, uh, you know, this is the one that's got me excited, really excited recently is is this which is if i put on um a wireframe like so you see that's super super high res now um what we would want to do is go to quad remesher and you can see here we get a panel now if you have if you've not been on the beta and you've just got this you may get your option to buy it here now if you hit remesh now you will get an option to buy if you haven't already purchased it. And the way that this works is it takes your mesh and it remeshes it. Now you could say, well, hang on, we had that already up here. So if you go into the geometry tab and look under miscellaneous, we had quad remesh it and we could say a thousand polygons and remesh it. So give it a second to calculate. And there you go, you get a lower res mesh. So that was how we were doing it. But the quality of quad remesh is significantly more accurate and higher. And I'll show you on a character in a moment. So first of all, let's just quickly do it with quad remesh, exactly as I've just done it with the normal remesh. So you hit quad, uh, hit a thousand, then you hit remesh, confirm yes. It would calculate in the same way as the other one does. And there you go. Now you can't tell 
that much on a sphere, but even that one is more predictable. So what's what's happened there is it's given you nice edge flow all over, and that really does matter for characters. So let's switch to some of the characters you've probably seen me doing on Instagram and, and X recently um, and have a look at how I'd use them in there. Okay, so this is the Queen Alien I've been working on for quite some weeks. Um, it's fully articulated, so it's made of lots of parts. Things like the tail are on a curve, so I can still edit them. Um, but it's all ridiculously high res. So what does that mean? So if you look at the head, and we'll just like, you know, we'll zoom right in on the head and we'll switch wireframe on. And you can see now that this is super high res. If you come up to the top panel and have a look, you'll be able to see under multi-res, you can see there it's actually it's only 180k. So it's not as, as big as some of the you know models that I do do. But what we would want to do now is bring that down to a level that, that, that that's usable. Now, I'm doing a video next about reprojection. So don't worry if you don't understand what I'm about to do, but I'm going to clone that head. So I've now got two of the heads and I'm going to hide that head. And that means I've got a spare version of this head after I've retopologized it. And that's what we do when we project the high to the low. Remember that for the next video. Now, if I come to the head and go back up to quad remesh. So if I tap on the head, make sure that it is the only one selected. You don't want any of these selected in if it's in any group. So, you know, keep, keep it completely um, just the one that you want to work on. Then come up to the top and I'd say make me uh, instead of a thousand. Let's bring that down. Tap in there and I'd say make it um, make it say 800 polygons or as close as you can get it. Now you could look at face groups, so if I turn off the wireframe and tap face groups, you can see that this model has auto grouped every part. Again, just like polygroups, but the head, for some reason, has decided to do its own little thing with face groups. I, I didn't deliberately paint that. Um, it might have been from a very early part of the model, but interestingly, um, it, it's it's done in a way that um, will help me show you so, you know some of the um, some of the things that I want to show you. So before we quad remesh it, let me just change those face groups a tiny tiny bit. So around this head, I'd like to group the back of it as one group. If I come around to the front and group the horns, that means the horns will be a separate group as well. And it might be that we do this entire head a bit better as well. Now you can take your time with this. You can add and you know, you can change your selections and move it on uh, how, however you need to. But once that's done, you can move on and go back to quad remesher. And then we'll just say quad remesh, 800 polygons and remesh it. And now it calculates again. And what you notice instantly is it's kept those face groups. So you can see where this is going. We can separate it, we can remesh and keep our face groups as well. So if I then put on wireframe and I'll just solo it and have a look so we can just see it. You can see that that has matched my geometry quite well. Let's turn off our um, outline and we'll turn off smooth shading there so you can see it a little bit better. Now it has made some mistakes here. You can see that it's it's put, you know it's definitely not, not done it correctly, but most of it, it's picked up what we want. And you've now got selectable areas and with face group on, we can show and hide all of the parts as uh, as we're working on them. So, it, it, you know, if, if that is something that we need to do, it, it gives us a really, really flexible way of, of, of remeshing our models. And then next video, we'll talk about how to project our high res stuff onto this. Let me just redo that for you um, with a higher res. So what we'll do is instead of 800, we'll make it 1500 and you'll see how that impacts it. So remesh that again. And as you can see, it's done the polygroups again. It has it has messed up a little bit here. So you might want to go even a little bit, a bit, a bit higher. Um, it, it's actually left a hole there. OK, let's remesh it a little bit higher. So I'm going to remesh it to 2000 quads this time. So remesh, say yes. And now it's going to calculate again. And you can see there it's better, but it's still messing up. And what I find is the reason it's messing up is because this button is on here. 
or isn't on. So if you leave symmetry on, you will get some, you know, and you're not absolutely exactly bang on, then you will get some problems. There are some some settings in here. So you can obviously your target quads, you've got the adaptive count, which will, will improve it. If you if you tap on the question mark, at 100%, the quad size will vary depending on the object's curvature, allowing smaller quads on higher curvature. At 0%, the quad size will be uniform. So let's just see how that impacts us. So I'm going to bang it all the way up. I'm going to undo it. I'm going to check these other ones are on. So I've got auto detect hard edges, which means we'll capture some of these edges. And we've got density painting as well, which we're going to cover in another video. That basically means we can tell it where we want, um, uh, you know, the higher res to go. So let's let's try it this time. Symmetry is definitely off. We're at 2000 quads and we'll just remesh this time and see what we get. And there you go. You can see it's a much, much cleaner, much nicer model overall. So it's given us wherever there's a tight little curve, it's given us more. And it just means that th this will be so much more useful for you. If I turn wireframe off, you can see that it's almost exactly what we want. Um, and that's only with 2000 quads instead of 2 million uh, uh, quads so it's it's a superb addition to our workflow now what you can do at this point is if you just go over to the geometry tab miscellaneous and you tap unwrap um, there are settings in here so you've got some stretching and some island spacing so you could increase those a little bit if you if you felt like you wanted to and then if you just unwrap it and then click inspect you can see there it's unwrapped it for you now it's not the best it's not like taking it out to cozy blanket and doing it but it's significantly quick because it's it's obviously a single click um let's redo that uv with a different set of settings so we'll bring that island spacing right down and we'll bring the max stretch right up and we'll do the same thing again we'll just unwrap it and there you go, it's giving you some bigger patches. The point being, we've now got everything we need to generate low to high maps, which again, I will cover in um, one of our next videos that will generate your normal map, your texture map, true um, baking and being able to capture maps here in Nomad. So it's a super exciting plugin um, and, 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 you know, Yes, it's a fee, so you might not be used to that, but trust me, as someone who does this professionally with other programs, a $15 fee is quite acceptable. Um, if you're going to do anything where you want to get it into a game or AR or anything like that, you're going to want to get you know this plugin going. This entire model will be done um, in a few minutes, so we, 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 we can bring this down to basically 20,000 polygons, which makes it pretty much... With those UV maps, we can pop that straight into anything like Substance or Procreate or, or straight into, you know, Unreal Engine or something like that. So Quad Remesher is huge um, if you want to do anything beyond the sculpting. Twinning that with face groups makes this the best update we've had in quite some time. One tiny little feature now is that all of the primitives have UVs built in. So if you open up any of the primitives, so if you go to add and we'll do cylinder you can see there the cylinder has got um uvs built in you can see i've got inspect on in the background so you can see what i'm doing if we go up to say add torus it's you know a complete um uv map all the way around on the torus unwrapped and stretched out you can say add um, let's just get one of the crazy ones so we've got um the cone there's the cone unwrapped top and bottom so and and also what you might be seeing as i'm doing this is face groups so you, you know you, you you've got them all set in face groups and in um you know in with uvs as well so we'll do one more so we'll just do plane and you can see it's got auto uvs on the plane already so why is it important to have uvs on a plane by default so it's a sing simple reason really so if i switch to lit we've now got a lit scene you can see my uvs in the background if i come over and i add a texture like so that means the textures are stuck to the plane so i've done this in my hair video so you can see this and also now uh, you know i hope you you're aware of this back up to the top go into opacity pick an alpha and there you've got it alpha out and you can see there how useful that is because you've now got textures on a plane with an alpha um so much to explore 
in this version and in previous versions that are now coming together to make it a powerful tool set. So definitely go and have a play with Quad Remesher and let me have a look at what you've you've been making with it. One of the projects I did recently was this goldfish, and you can see there straight away, you can see that the the, polyg the polygons look way, way different than what you'd see in Nomad Sculpt normally. And that's because this is now good geometry. So if you just take the head, and if you just come down and reduce the resolution, you can see that that's low polygon. If I take this, and I bring that down you can see that that's low polygon so this is now we're not able to edit points edges and verts but it is giving us a superb um clean mesh underneath which is something that makes this a game changer